Hi everybody, I'm Nick Ovenden with the uh, Boniface Engineering Tow Show display team. Uh, this time of year we would normally be doing our demonstrations at the Professional Recovery Tow Show in Telford. Unfortunately, like most other things, that's been cancelled. Um, we've had a, a request from quite a few people now about having a virtual tow show and maybe putting some stuff online that people can look at. You will have seen just at the start of this video a crane that broke down last night. Uh, suffered a catastrophic failure of all of its electrics and so now can't be run or driven or operated. So what we're going to attempt to do is pick it up with two 1075 rotators and put it onto a four axle tracks low loader. Preferably would have done this out on the road but we can't just shut a road down just for demonstration purposes so you'll have to uh, kind of bear with us that this is not a motorway but it's very busy as you can see with the traffic coming past me. So we're using two 75 tonne rotators. We have the uh, Manchitz machine and the Saunders machine. Um, both similar cranes, but very different winch setups and very different leg setups. So you'll be able to see the difference between the two of them. I'll be talking you through some of the technicalities of one against the other and what we're doing with uh, loads and safe working loads and uh, mechanical advantages and all that kind of stuff. So. The plan is to pick it up in the air and reverse the low loader underneath it, uh, ready to take away. Um, as you can see, we're lifting this crane on the legs. So as it's a uh, non-running vehicle, there's a manual way of getting the legs out just enough on the crane to be able to get chains around them. So um, we'll explain that to you a bit later on, show you how to take the panel off and stuff. What we've had to do though is kind of get everything ready. And uh, so we're almost ready for the big lift now. We've got everything all attached. We've got the, uh, the guys over here that are ready to go and the tracks trailer ready to come in. You'll see with the remote controls on these machines that these guys can stand together, work the controls and talk to each other as they're going through, which makes for a more controlled operation. So that's why they're both here, not, not one here and one on his other truck. So what they will do though is occasionally walk around, just check everything's okay with the legs and with the, uh, with the booms, and everything's level. It's particularly windy here today, so they're fighting against the wind as they, every time they move with this, it's trying to blow that crane across. But hey, that's real life in the world of recovery, so we learn how to deal with that. So what they're trying to do is the minimum amount of lift that they can get away with to get this thing underneath it. It's a hell of a lift going on here, 48 tons. Okay, so um, what you can see over my shoulder now is the uh, Boniface spreader bar setup. So very ingenious thing that it, it's, uh, it works from a rigid tow pole and utilizes that. So most of your heavy recovery vehicles, you're gonna have a tow pole on them anyway. So if you can just see on the ends, there's like a triangular plate with a, um, a system where there's a, a spacer and a bolt that goes through that, bolts it to the end of the tow pole and then a shackle on the top, shackle on the bottom. So you can either take um, endless loops and make yourself an apex with a swivel hook on that. So if you wanted to spin something, or you can do what we've done just here, where you connect your winch ropes directly straight up to it. So two types of spreader bar are available from the, from the Miller line. One is the Boniface steel one like this, and the other one is the Miller aluminium one that comes in sections that you've seen us demonstrate before. As you can see, a great job done by these guys. Very smooth, uh, massive operation here. So although there's no slewing of the booms, there was many operations. There was up and down with the booms in and out just to kind of move the back end across. They, they're working on quite tight tolerances there because they have to be as close as they can to the legs. And of course, the trailer having to drive alongside them, there's no kind of leeway for that. So the, uh, the front truck had to stay where it was in terms of elevation and distance but the back one was able to move a little bit so they've just moved the trailer in a little bit more at the back so they can just lower it down. You guys are just de-rigging at the moment putting all their stuff away we've got the straps and stuff off. Uh, what we're going to do after they've moved all their stuff out of the way is just demonstrate then the operation of the tracks trailer um, sliding the axles forward and the tailboard and stuff 
and we're actually going to drive the crane back off of the trailer rather than lifting it back off again so you can then see the uh, the operation of the trailer um, as I said before 48 tons this crane and the the tracks trailer has a payload around 45 46 so you know it kind of proves that it will it will take that kind of weight so that's what they're doing at the moment just putting everything away um, we'll be back in a short while to show you the operation of the trailer so hope you're enjoying it so far I am <laughs> 